Hey, Facebook. It is Saturday, 10 o'clock, 08. Don Victor here. We're going to take a look at another work of Arte. In this case, it's an illustration by the great Norman Rockwell. And uh, Norm, like I've said before, is my favorite artist illustrator his ability to tell stories are fascinating and his design skills are insane he is like Arnold Schwarzenegger when it comes to storytelling and design as Arnold is to bodybuilding in my imagination and fantasy land so uh, this painting here before we get into it Just want to talk about the core 80. I got to get some better light in here. It's a little dark, but that's okay. Um, went down in, in uh, this little art expo fair thing in today. today. Uh, met a whole bunch of artists. Saw two of, uh, uh, of the uh, people at the academy, Michelle and Charlene. And um, it was it was a cool time today. It was a cool time. Uh, my my energy is a little low. It's late. Had a long day, but uh, I looked at a couple paintings and I picked this one. I just thought it would be a nice uh, little fun treat. And also, since we're going through the politics and all that kind of crap, um, it it has to do with the uh, political uh, conversation or maybe the lack of. And so this will be kind of fun to uh, take a look at this piece. Um, working on my Ascension composition and uh, looking forward to uh, pushing that a lot further. And, and uh, a couple little things I want to make some changes and adjustments to, but it's been fun to, to, to work on that big scale which is something some of the people at the academy are doing. For years, we used to work on 8.5 by 11s, and we would compose everything out there and then blow it up. Um, but working on these 36 by 36 grids are really, really nice. They just get some beautiful long gestures and, and movements. And, uh, it's, and I also like uh, the idea of drawing uh, on my feet rather than sitting on my butt. It's just, it's just something nice about putting everything up on the wall and and being able to compose right there. So that's been really, really fun. Uh, if you guys are interested in these grids, I'll go ahead and if I don't do it in this episode, um, definitely by next week, I'll go ahead and, and, and start promoting those uh, uh, place for you guys to order those big grids. And um, we have different kinds of grids. We have these here are square grids up behind me and on the wall. But we also have what we call the matrix, which let me see if I have a small one here on my desk. Uh, no. And then we also have one we call the solo, uh, the solo uh, grids. And so I'll go ahead and explain all that stuff in other videos. But um and then next week we'll have them up available if you guys are interested in uh, uh, getting them. And we'll, we'll go ahead and get them printed for you and shipped off to wherever you uh, need them to go. So that'll I'll make sure I have that up for you guys next week. So let's take a look at this beautiful little essay in political conversation, or the lack thereof, by the great Norman Rockwell. So here is this cool little illustration. I do love her shoes. Aren't those gorgeous shoes? This is why I think this guy's an idiot. He has such a sexy wife and he's fighting with her over nonsense. Uh, ay, 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 ay. Anyways, little guy down here with a little teddy bear. All crying. That's kind of funny. 
But uh, this this video is actually going to be very very short. Uh, I, I'm only going to show you uh, two slides outside of the uh, outside of the original. Um, but it's going to be a couple of little tricks that I'm going to show you here that Norm's using, and you'll be able to take them and apply it to your own artwork and have uh, a lot of success with it. Okay, so the first one here is. We're getting to look at the body language of these people. The man is just like all bent out of shape. Do you see that? When I bring the overlay over, you can see it clearly. He's just a big old zigzag, you know, his butt's off the seat, whatever. But you know, he's just this big old zigzag. He, he all, his body, it's funny if you look at the little kid crying, you know, it, it's, it's like, the shape of this guy's body is the sound of that annoying, crying, temper tantrum type of energy. And that's what this idiot is uh, doing. So on the other side of the table, you have someone being stubborn. I, this is what I want. <laughs> and she is just constructed of all of these verticals. She is a wall. She's not going to have any of it. She's not going to take any of it. I thought what was interesting is if you come up these verticals, they, they form this diagonal in the, way, in, in the places that they stop. And at first I was like, huh, that, I find that interesting why that would, would, would have been that way. And I'll show you in the next slide why it's that way. Because... You know, Norm is a brilliant composer, and so therefore there's intention to it. So in this slide, we're just looking at there is no connection between the two. One's all bent out of shape. The other one's a brick wall. This is called the lack of communication. The inability to communicate or to connect or to commune with another human being. Notice... Uh, We'll go into the next scene here. Well, let me just go back here. Notice his finger and his arm are all on a horizontal. The Notice where his mouth is and what's coming out of his mouth is the rail uh, of the window, like the, the part of the window, which creates this very strong horizontal so that when you're in this area, you know your eye moves along that you can feel him screaming at her, yelling at her with force. His voice is coming towards her. But what's brilliant is there's this, I don't know, it looks like a candle, um, like a little lantern or something between the two of them. And it creates a wall so that his words don't even come to her. That, you know, that, that, like she has like a wall up in front of her so that whatever he says, she doesn't even hear. It never even makes it to her, her ears. Let's see how he, he does this. And so it creates this interesting vertical. So if you come up the center of this uh, uh, lantern, and you come all the way up, you'll see that it hits the birdcage above them. I think that's a birdcage. I think it's kind of disgusting that they would have a birdcage over their, their uh, breakfast table. you got to smell those birds, and then they fly around, and the little feathers land on your food maybe that's why they're so angry uh because they're poisoned by their by their birds <laughs> sorry i just thought that was kind of like a funny rant anyways so you have this ver vertical which creates like this force field right between the two of them his horizontal words is shouting screaming ah! being all bent out of shape ah it doesn't affect her because she puts up the block and what's neat is that once you go past that lamp you that 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 vertical two things happen with your eyes the uh, if you if you look up there's the diagonal of her hair and your eye flows up through there and then if you look down it flows down into the edge of the um, the magazine that she's holding or or newspaper and then even into into the stove 
And so his voice comes, it hits a wall, it either goes over, it goes up and over her. Not that she doesn't understand it, it just means like, you know, it's not going in her ear, okay? It's just going, he, she's just letting it roll up over top of her or it just falls to the ground. No, you know, she's in a, sci, sci, uh, um, a cone of silence, if you will. She ain't hearing it, she ain't taking it, she just... She's just stoic, and mm, I love the little pouty lip that she has. It's so gorgeous. This guy was a man. He'd throw the damn paper down and grab her by the lip and kiss her. Anyways, but uh, his priority is to to show how manly he is by how much he can scream at her, I guess. Cool. Yay. Um... So these, this is basically, uh, in essence, this piece. And there's a lot of other things going on in terms of the design. But I just want to keep it simple today. Yesterday we did an hour and a half long one. So today I'm just going to keep it a little simple, keep it a little light. But what's beautiful about this is you can uh, design communication. You can design talk. You can design noise and sound in your compositions using lines and space and values and temperatures. And we have this horizontal thrust. It, it, it comes in conjunction. It, it hits these vertical thrusts, which ultimately stop it. It's what we call line inertia. A line set in motion stays in motion until something outside of itself interferes. And so this horizontal is set in motion. Your eye travels and then boom. It hits this vertical thrust, and it stops. And then once once it hits it, it, it kind of shatters. It either goes up over her head or down along the edge of this uh, book or magazine or whatever it is that she's holding. Um, yeah, so it's a very, very effective design. I hope uh, you guys learned something from that. And, you know, try it out. When you're sketching it out, just kind of... Ask yourself, if my eye was going to follow the way that the person is speaking, what would that feel like? What would that look like, you know? If he was singing to her, maybe rather than using horizontal, maybe there might have been some flowers behind her or behind them or a cloud or something so, so that your eye could have moved in a uh, up and down motion. But right now, that's not the point of this illustration, so... The point of it is that he's just being forceful and just yelling, this is the guy that we need to vote for, whatever, you know, and she's like, no, we can't vote for him, or whatever, <laughs> all right, so have fun illustrating, communicating, drawing, designing, whatever you want to call it, we call it composing, until next time. You thought I was going to say ciao, but I'm not going to say ciao. Because what I want to say before I say ciao is core 80, baby. The core 80. If you want to learn how to communicate your ideas, your feelings, your stories, and you want the language of design to be able to actually communicate those concepts and those feelings and, and ideas, then you need somebody to walk alongside of you, walk you through that journey, guide you through that journey, point out the pitfalls, and collapse time. The reality is, if you work hard and allow me to give you the right information and guide you through the process, what would take you 10 to 20 years you'll be able to do in three to six months. And to most people, that sounds very arrogant. To me, it just sounds like me telling somebody that we're going to breathe in the next, like, there. It's like saying my hair is black, you know? It's like saying, if you came into my office... You would see this drawing on the wall. It's just that obvious. It's like, it's, it's, it's that. I've worked with 
so many artists and I've experienced it over and over and over and over again that we collapse time. I don't know how necessarily we were able to do it. Um, I guess, again, I, I never saw myself as a great teacher, but people say that I'm a great teacher. So maybe that's part of it. So I guess I'm a great teacher. And I can teach you how to become self-aware, how to go with inside yourself and pull out great stories, how to look at the stories that are all around you and begin to curate them. And then using design, how to articulate them in a meaningful way, visually. I can't teach you how to do this through music. I can't teach you how to do this through dance. But if you like the warmth of a pencil in one hand and the warmth of a paper in another, you like the way the paper smells and the smell of the wood or the pencil, if you like making visual images, then I can teach you. On that note, now I'm going to say, Arrivederci. Ciao. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.